<laughs> we'll just cut you tomorrow. Yeah, I got to train tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Don't kill me. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we fucking had his toe cut off so he could keep training. Wow. So Woo. Nick and him, they've got some screws loose, but they're committed. You know, yeah. how committed are you that you want to achieve this, this goal, this dream? His dream, he grew up in New Jersey. He's like, I want to be a wrestler. Wow. And so I'm going to, I'm going to do this. Um, incredibly inspirational guy. So him and 12 other guys came over to our Airbnb and we watched the fights and it was Connor versus Khabib and we loved watching everything that night. And then whenever that happened, um, so I'm torn on it because I love those guys as fighters. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love them as fighters. Um, and then whenever that happened, it was just something that in me, I don't, I don't know if I was embarrassed or if I was disappointed, but th they, we were introducing some guys, uh, Steve Weatherford, who played for the New York Giants. Um, he came over for like, uh, he played for the Giants for like 10 or 12 years, um, lives in San Diego, great guy, but he's not a big MMA fan. So I was explaining everything to him. And when that happened, it was just pretty disappointing. Yeah. Then I spoke at, um, at uh, Anti-Bullying Coalition in Tulsa. And I went there and there was this girl there that uh, she looked real sweet, real quiet, introverted. Um, and she worked with mental health and her name was Allie. All of a sudden she found out I was an MMA fighter and she said, oh my gosh, you know, my husband's a huge MMA fan. I'm not at all. I never really even sat down and watched it with him. But then he decided to take me to the T-Mobile arena for the, so her first fight was Connor Khabib. And uh, she was in there and she said she loved it before that. Uh, Michelle Watterson was an incredible inspiration to her, her saying that she wants to be the first mom to be a UFC champion. She said that the night was going great. And then whenever that happened, she said it was, it literally scared her because fights started popping off to the right of her, mm -hmm. left over behind her. She yeah. said it poured out into the arena. Um, and so that was her first introduction to MMA. So that was a little tough to see, but at the same time, I get it. Like those emotions are flaring and you were talking about it too. And, uh, kind of your perspective of martial artist and. Yeah, I mean, same thing that, that you were feeling, just, you know, that little bit of kind of sadness and disappointment of, you know, the, the biggest event, the most views, the most people watching, and that's the last thing that they see. That's what they, you know, uh, go to bed thinking about and feeling about. And, and I just, you know, I don't think uh, even, even Connor and Khabib, that's not who they are as martial artists, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, sure, all the emotions were flying and they – you know, uh, they have a, a history and, and it's hard to let that go. But I, I, I just don't, I don't feel like that's even who they really are. You see in all their other fights, uh, they, they respect their opponents, you know, shake I'm going to disagree with you. Um, I mean, look, Connor's that's what he does. Yeah. He talks shit to people and fucks with their head. I mean, it's, it's a giant part of his game. And I know that that was part of the strategy of him throwing that dolly at the bus. That shit's way out of line. I mean, yeah. throwing a dolly at the bus, that's not what a martial artist does. When you, when you, if you stop and think about what we value about martial arts in terms of teaching children honor and res respect and discipline and the, the things when we think of as a, a classical martial artist like Leota Machida or someone like that bowing to their mm -hmm. opponent, that, that is not this – is, this is theatrics. This right. is hype. But – in all fairness, the UFC used that to sell that fight. I mean, that was a big part of their mm -hmm. promotional campaign was seeing Connor throw the dolly at the bus and the screaming and the yelling. You know, you're setting, you're, you're setting an example. There's something going on outside of the actual contest itself. There's all this extracurricular violence, right? There's throwing a dolly at a bus, shattering in the window, all these guys running and screaming, get off the bus. And then they're promoting this. They're showing this. And then everyone's shocked. That hmm. it escalates after the fight itself, you know. One of the, in in some ways, one of the more interesting moments of the fight was Khabib on top of Connor beating the shit out of him, going, "Let's talk now." Have you seen that video? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. fucking terrifying. Yeah, it is. It's like, come on, let's talk. Bam, and he's just slamming him. He, Bam. He told him he's going to do now. that before the fight yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to talk. We're going to talk. <laughs> right. When I'm on top of you and you're tired and I'm beating the fuck out of you, that's when we're going to talk. And that's what he did. You know, this is all not. What Khabib does. Right. This is outside mm -hmm. of his, his. If you look at his standard behavior, he's very respectful. I mean, he's never had an uh, incident like this ever in a fight. All of his fights before that are him shaking his opponent's hand, doing the standard stare down, standard stuff, talking about his skill set and what he's going to do. 
And there's no disrespect. There's no insults. There's none yeah. of this. That's what I mean about Khabib. Yeah, but not Connor. Yeah. I mean, this is. I, a, but uh, but here's the other thing. On the other side, it makes it fun. I'm very torn because. All the shit that he talked to Jose Aldo, look, that was a big factor in Jose Aldo charging at him, losing his composure, face first, and getting clipped with that left hand. That's a big factor, mm -hmm. is the emotional angst that he had gone through for months and months on the mm -hmm. road with this guy. The mental yeah. warfare. Yeah, I mean, that mental warfare is a real thing. It just didn't work with Khabib. It had yeah. the opposite effect. And with Khabib, he, he's like, I can't wait to get my fucking hands on you. It wasn't, I can't believe this guy's saying these things to me. With Khabib, it, but it ramped up the violence to the point where he was letting you know, like, hey, this is real to me. Like, if you if you want to act mm -hmm. thuggish, and you, well, we'll just keep going. We'll just, I'll, t I'll keep taking this. Like, he didn't want to stop after Connor had tapped. Like, he was holding on to him. And he's letting him know, hey, motherfucker, like, this is real. This is not just shit talking. Connor was saying to him, this is just business. It's just business. And he's like, let's talk now. Let's talk now. Like, he, he's like, this is not business to him. Mm -hmm. So to him, fights, I mean, this is what he said in the press conference. It should be, this is a respect sport. And this, should, this sport should be about two men expressing themselves to the best of their physical ability inside the cage. Just doing their best against the best fighters in the world, and that should speak for itself. And that they should have respect and honor outside of it. Mm. I wish you would have had the chance to say that. You know, yeah, that, we that didn't have a sad, chance. The sad part was him letting the emotions take over what he felt, yeah. and, and instead of just getting the belt tied on and kind of killing them with kindness at the end, and saying that and having that chance to put that in everyone's minds and. And well, ears. He, he did in the post-fight interview, but I mean, how many or the post-fight uh, press conference? But how many people got a chance to right. see that? A lot less. Yeah. I mean, just a few thousand, I'm sure. And as in comparison to the 2.4 million that downloaded the pay-per-view, and the many, 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 many more that saw YouTube clips day, and Instagram ESPN, clips, and yeah, I mean, everybody yeah. saw it. It's it's unfortunate, but it's also a financial windfall. Like it's like, the whole thing. It's weird yeah. because. Part of what makes Connor so interesting is that he's so good at talking shit, he's hilarious, and he knows how to back it up. But when we saw him fight Khabib, he just, he fell short. It's really that simple. When skill versus skill, he fell short. And the, the, the shit talking led to Khabib being very, taking it very personal and very personal at the end and then pointing at Dylan Dennis and mm -hmm. jumping off the, the top of the cage. The whole thing was just, it's so fucking crazy. But the, the idea that people should be surprised after Connor right. throws a yeah. dolly at the bus and then still winds up able to fight. I mean, just what did he do? Paid some money, did some, I mean, yeah. we got to do some some service what is his community service i don't even know what he has to do i don't either there was yeah, something. that's where it's not yeah it's kind of crazy i yeah. mean throwing a dolly is fucking way worse than punching a guy who punches people for a living which is dylan dennis is a professional fighter he's a professional fighter he jumps out he takes a swing at him they're screaming he, and dylan's like fuck you and he's like fuck you and there's a bunch of people get involved and then a bunch of other people jump in the whole thing was nuts but the idea that we should be shocked after him throwing a dolly at a bus because Khabib's on the bus, that sh those Russians don't fucking play like that, man. Yeah, yeah. This you is see the videos afterwards when Dagestan where they're shooting off Dude! the Uzis and AK-47s. Yeah. So I wrestled there uh, when I was like 18. Um, wrestled there and it was crazy. They were taking us around everywhere in G wagons, and the ones in front of us had like armed, uh, I don't know, machine guns on top of them. The one behind us armed machine guns on top of them. Oh. Um, and then what was it? We were we were walking through one of the streets and there's these big chains that are in between the road and the sidewalk. And we're walking down the sidewalk and all of a sudden there's like a laser that comes over and, uh, and our guys are like, we gotta go, we gotta go. All of a sudden a car came up onto the sidewalk, started driving like they're gonna plow us down. We had to jump into the road Whoa. to not get hit. And uh, I, I don't know why that happened, but after that we weren't allowed our, uh, the hotel we were in, we had like balconies to where we could look out well, they had to move our rooms to where we're inside, to where we couldn't have a balcony and everything else, to where the, the just because of that threat, because of the laser that came, because of the truck that came up onto the sidewalk and tried to run us over. There was some um, crazy rumor that someone got arrested outside of the uh, T-Mobile Arena. See if that's true, if someone got arrested with a gun outside the T-Mobile Arena. 
on after the fight or during the fight because there was there was some sort of crazy talk about threats the problem is you don't know how much of that's bullshit right you know i mean i probably should have researched that before we talked about it but you see anything bullshit i don't do they they post that i don't know i heard the same thing though you heard it too i heard yeah yeah Uh, yeah i i think i heard it on uh, instagram but yeah, they don't play around. No, they're no, honor, the Russians are, they're, it's a yeah. different world, man. Right. Especially Dagestan. That's a hard yeah. part mm-hmm. of the country. Yeah. Not that Dublin isn't hard, mm-hmm. but it's like that they're not known for their uh, humor and shit talking. <laughs> yeah, well I, I well I, I, I went into a store. I went into a store like a little market uh, and I was whistling in Dagestan and I didn't know that that was something disrespectful. But someone came right up behind me and just slapped me on the back of the head. Like an older Whoa. man, an older man, probably like a Khabib's dad came up and I knew that he was a bad dude. So I wasn't going to do anything. I just didn't know. Translator had to come up and say, you don't whistle in public. You know, like, don't, oh, you're having a good day. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't, don't whistle. Have a good day. Yeah. Whistling's disrespectful. Yeah. And I Whoa. can't even whistle that good. But, uh, but I was just kind of whistling to myself. I didn't even know I was doing it. What do they think about air guitar? Back. Yeah, that's probably bad. <laughs> that's probably bad. And they don't show the bottom of your feet. Uh, what? Like if you, uh, that's for sure. You can Google that. But if you um, are sitting there and you like cross your legs and you show the bottom of your foot, that's culturally really disrespectful to show um, the, yeah, bottoms of your shoes or the bottom of your feet. So they just don't play around there. Um, and then so, the bo- so, if you have your, like your foot on top of your thigh like this, yep. like sitting like this, don't do that. Can't do that. Don't do that. Someone will come and slap your leg and, really? and make sure your feet are both on the ground. So just it's a, a lot of cultural stuff. It's a hard part of the world, man. It's it a hard part of the world. So well, they're always climbing up those mountains. Uh, mm. I mean, it's just jagged mountains. I remember it was one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. Um, just stunning. But just the the hard life. Did you see that uh, Nike, or sorry, not Nike, but Reebok video that Khabib did? Yes. Um, it, was, it was awesome. Yeah, it, it was, was awesome. awesome. But yeah. just seeing that, that's that's the real life there. It's There's a, a photo hardship. of him that he posted uh, on his Instagram with his father, him and his father uh, standing right after the fight he did it, like to explain like that this this what this is about to him is honor. It's not about money, it's about honor and respect. And it's a photo of him standing with his father with this incredible mountain range behind him. Wow. Yeah, it's a it's a, it's a different part of the world. So that that strategy with Connor backfired. I mean, do you think there's a point where uh, there it you is. know the, the Look UFC, how gorgeous yeah. that is. Just stunning. that's incredible. What a photo! Hmm. That they should say, "Hey, let's let's turn the the talking down a little bit." You How know? can you? That's what that's what got Connor to the dance. I mean, it's one of the reasons but it, why he's, it has escalated. It has right? escalated it has. since Aldo yeah. to then Mayweather bringing in his dad and the mm-hmm. assaults yeah. and different stuff like that, and then Khabib going after his well, family religion, right, and everything yeah. else. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's gotten it's almost like he has to I think you were saying this. Yeah, he's got one up himself or right. you know and, and it, for me it just kind of felt like you know, it wasn't a surprise. It was kind of like the karma for the UFC promoting the bus and right. you know and and letting it just keep getting deeper and deeper. You know. But they say it's the story and it is right. the story, but at a certain point if it's something that was illegal or hurt somebody, maybe you don't use that. For I was honestly promotion. shocked that they were using it in promotion. I was like, well, I shouldn't be shocked. I thought that when I saw the promo and I saw the the, the, the dolly flying at the bus and then the video from the inside with the glass shattering, I was like, okay, I guess I shouldn't be shocked because it did happen. You know, it is a part of the story. But, I mean, is this is this encouraging this? Like, what is – I mm-hmm. mean, they're using it right. to sell the biggest fight in the history of the sport. Turned out to be true. It is right. the biggest fight in the history of the sport. Is that good? Hmm. That doesn't seem good. No. That no. seems – it seems – I don't Not know, Not from my man. perspective. But it's – you know, it's entertainment versus sport, right? When, when it comes to sport, like you would never use that to, to advertise the Olympics. Right. Right? They would never have an assault to advertise the Olympics. But this is something different. It's commerce. There's a lot of money involved. It's, uh, it's a, a huge cultural spectacle. It's Conor McGregor, who's, he transcends sport. He's this uh, superstar in the, just the world of just show business. So it's different. But it's different, but 